Okay, part three. Uh, goodness knows how many parts this is going to be. I've got the two packs built up. So just to take you through uh, again what we have here. So these are each uh, 3.2, 3.3 volt cells. Uh, they charge at 3.65. There are two uh, here and two here in parallel. So these two together are a 3.2. These here together are 3.2 in parallel. And then we're going to wire these parallel pair to these parallel pair in series. So the posit uh, positive is going to wire to the negative. The negative is going to wire to the negative. Positive to positive. You'll see that when I put the bus bars on. Question came in in the comments. Uh, just to answer a couple of those. People asking what's on the bottom. And uh, we should worry about our bottoms. So these have like a plastic uh, protective uh, film. It's a sort of millimetre thick sticky backed. Uh, then I show you there, you can probably just see it peeling off. Uh, and a lot of people ask, why didn't I, why didn't I put the um, uh, the rods and the silicon tube on the bottom? And I would, that was probably a really good idea, and I would highly recommend you doing that because it will support the bottom of the cells. Unfortunately, because I'm putting these in this uh, metal box here, uh, which I'll show you in a second, uh, height is my limiting factor. Again, other comments said. Why don't you make it higher, make the uh, wooden plates higher? Again, my limiting factor is the box that I'm putting them in. Um, I will line the box with probably a 3mm uh, closed cell foam or neoprene foam just to add a bit of vibration suppression and to protect the bottom cells. But say so they are, they do have this kind of plastic film on the bottom of the cells which keeps them protected. Now, the top of the cells have a 6mm uh, thread in each one of them. Um, now there's a, been a lot of confusion, a lot of statements about people stripping the threads out on these. So what I'm going to do is put in these studs. So this is a, a six mil flat ended stud. You can get pointy ended studs. This is a flat ended stud with a hex uh, nut in uh, hex head in the other side. I think these are about 20 mil. They come in all different sorts of sizes. I may change the size, but this is what I have at the moment. These are stainless, obviously, because this is going in a boat. So what I'm going to do is insert one of those into each one of the cells. Let's do that now. Right, so that's all in. You can see now the studs sticking out the cells. I think that's a much better way of doing it. it protects the threads. It's only a soft aluminium uh, helicoil kind of uh, piece in the top of the battery, the cells. So I think putting the studs in will hopefully protect about the, uh, protect the threads in the batteries. And as I'm tightening the nut down, I can hold an Allen key or a hex head in top of the stud so that it doesn't, as I'm tightening the nut down, it doesn't uh, over tighten the thread in the battery. Um, so those are the two packs there. Um, let's next put them in the case uh, ready and then I'll show you what I'm doing with regards to the bus bars. So now we have the two uh, cell packs in the battery case. This is a metal uh, I don't know if it's steel, I guess it's steel probably. Now, a lot of questions are going to come in. Where did I get it from? What's the link for the case? I don't know. I purchased this from uh, Zuba, which I got the cells from in China, in Shenzhen, and they supplied it for me. They sourced it. So uh, if you reach out to uh, the guys at Zuba, I'm sure if you reach out to the guys at any Olition uh, or any of the other uh, cell manufacturers, they will be able to supply a similar battery case. Um, so apologies, I can't tell you the link for this case, but this is what I'm going to be using. And again, this is the limiting factor as to why I didn't put the uh, threaded rods and the silicon tube underneath the batteries and why I didn't make these wooden panels any higher. I wanted to be able to lift them out, um, which you can see is reasonably straightforward to lift them in and out. Um, and I wanted to be able to enclose them in there. So uh, next up is the bus bars. Now, when you buy the cells, you can have them supplied with uh, bus bars and they come with these um, sort of steel looking uh, bus bars are about 1.5 mil I think they are um, thick uh, bus bars and they're okay I, when I did my um, capacity test I ran these they didn't particularly run hot 
um uh but i wanted to to go big with with this whole battery i wanted to over engineer it so what i did is i got some uh flat copper bar this is a five mil thick uh copper bar um which you can buy and it comes in a big long piece and i have drilled it out um to make the bus bars now a couple of quick tips if you're going to do this and follow along for yourself again i'll put the link for this uh, copper bar that you can buy um it's, it's the biggest and most complicated thing is getting the holes in the right place uh if you've got a drill press it's probably really really easy and you can do precision machining uh i don't i have a vice and an electric drill and it took me uh, the devil's own job to try and get these lined up um, in there. The other thing that is the most useful tool in the world if you are going to make your own copper bus bars is this. Uh, it is called a pipe reamer, I believe. Um, I got the, the information on this from uh, Metagrid. He uh, recommended this. Um, and it's just great for these bus bars because when you drill out this uh, copper, you get the sort of burring on the end. And you can go around it with a standing knife and, and try and get a nice kind of chamfered edge uh, on there. But this tool is just brilliant. You literally put it in the hole, twist it around a couple of times, and there is your beautifully chamfered uh edge there on your um your uh your copper stock bar so really really useful to get one of these tools if you are going to do this yourself um again i got this on amazon it was about four or five quid i'll get a link and i'll try and remember to put it in there for that so these are the bus bars now this is where it gets a little bit serious because this is when we're going to start going from individual kind of inert 3.2 volt ish cells into a battery pack and this is where if you get the wrong connections in the wrong place bad things will happen magic smoke magic fire will come and hurt you so be warned check double check triple check i would suggest taping up and insulating all of the connections um, so that you have no chance of shorting everything out and again before you drop this bar on top make sure you have everything in the right place just to show you we have two negatives here two positives here two negatives here two positives there what we're going to be doing and i will uh, do this uh, whilst we're filming i'd also wear eye protection um, if i was you as well and again i've tested all of these out as well So there is our first one on the batteries uh, there you can see so that's joining our or making a series uh, pair between these and we then need to create parallel pairs as well so we're going to drop that one on there and that one on to there and these are machined to fit um, so that is now a six volt battery we have two 3.2 volt batteries here and here and then in uh, in parallel and then this is the series link between the two making a six volt battery and uh, just uh, for for fun if we grab our voltmeter here hopefully you will be able to see if we now put a probe there and there uh, no, we don't. We put a probe there and there. There is our 6.66, number of the beast, our 6.66 volt battery um, there. So two 3.3 volt cells um, as they are at the moment. So that is our 6.6 volt battery. We'll do the same with the other one, which I shall do now. So there is another 6.66 volt battery uh, there. Now what we need to do is to join these two packs together. Now the join link will be between here and here, the negative of this pack to the positive of this pack. It could be here and here, um, but I'm gonna do it from here to here. Um, now for this, I'm gonna use a flexible cable because there is a little bit of movement between these two cells. I'm gonna try and pack them out as best I can in this case, 
but they can move around just slightly um, and if i put another copper bar across there and they do move um, and the whole thing shifts or vibrates there is the possibility that i could break those two uh, terminals in the top of the cells there so i'm going to run um, probably two 70 mil squared cables between here and here to then bring the two packs together to give us that full uh, 2p4s 14 ish volt battery um, to be able to run so those are the packs up together those are the bus bars that's the box that's going to go in and there'll be a nice metal uh, lid to go on top of it and then that would all be enclosed and complete and then we can move on to the battery management system and get that hooked up and working thank you very much for watching i do enjoy all of your comments they are great uh, so please keep commenting on there i'm sure there's going to be lots of information that i can learn from you guys out there um, that have more knowledge than me again i'm just doing this um, and building this as i go so please give us your comments uh, please subscribe hit the bell notifications for more information as we build this up again next part will be the bms um, i'll get the shunt in there and then we will be hooking up the uh, system for the uh, inverter and the, all of the management system that goes along with that. So thanks for watching and tune in for the next video.